Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Well, today is a very busy day because we are set to harvest our Japanese koi right here at the concrete tank in the house. And as I have told you, we use this area as our breeding facility and this is now our time for harvest. Well, I already have made an initial harvest of this and in fact, one half of the population of this uh, Japanese koi were already thrown in the mud pan. We cannot overcrowd them here in the concrete tank, that is why we have to uh, throw some of them in the mud pan. And it's been our usual practice to harvest during early in the morning because the temperature is very low and uh, this is now what is happening. Our staff have been so busy and you will see that we already have collected or gathered some babies of this Japanese koi. They're about three months old. This is our process. We select the bigger ones and then, of course, the bigger ones have different price in the market. So, you may wonder, what is this kind of breed? Well, I mix breed the Yamubaki and the Black Koi and it resulted like this. Some of them have mutated. There are actually beautiful patterns right here. And we are scheduled to breed again and then we will use this tank and we will grow them and then we will throw some of them in the mud pan. But I would like to uh, tell you that we already have made the comparison between raising the Japanese koi here in the concrete tank and uh, raising this Japanese koi in the mud pan. And I always mention that raising the koi in the mud pan is really best. And maybe you will ask Dexter, how much will this cost? Well, this uh, size will already be sold at uh, 35 pesos at the pet store and uh, the bigger ones are sold at 50 pesos. That's one dollar. And my problem here is the presence of the birds during the night time because I have witnessed myself that during midnight, some of the birds, the big birds really, are coming over and eating our fish. Well, this area is uh, just near in the mangrove area right there it's just uh, around 10 kilometers away from here it's a mangrove area already and we have so many birds right there these migratory birds the one that is very big that has long beak can really capable of eating the fish and uh, penetrating down under the water that's the reason why we have to harvest this early this business of uh, raising Japanese koi is actually lucrative and it all starts with your ability to breed. We already have some videos about how to breed the Japanese koi and we will provide the link below in case you may also want to breed your Japanese koi. And this koi will start to breed at at least one year old depending upon the conditioning. And you will observe that when your koi gets older, at least uh, one year old, their tummy will begin to bloat and this is for the female Japanese koi. And the body of the male will remain elongated, meaning thin compared to the body of the female koi, which is uh, bloated. And if that is happening to your koi, then chances are they are ripe to be bred. And you will start with the preparation of your spawning tank because the preparation of the spawning tank is really very crucial and the Japanese koi will not lay eggs when they feel that the water is not new or it's dirty. So unlike other fish, like the catfish, they will just lay eggs in a muddy water, in a murky water. There's no problem. There is no issue about laying of the eggs. 
but uh, this Japanese koi will really require clean water because they can anticipate that if they will lay eggs on a dirty water their eggs will not really be hatched and this is the nature of this Japanese koi So we will transport this one guys because uh, we will not delay this because uh, they will be gasping for breath and uh, we will use our vehicle and then we will put this right there at the tanks that we have prepared at the pet store and uh, this is actually the routine that we are doing and uh, this will only require us around 5 to 10 minutes travel because uh, the pet store is really just very near from here and it's still very early that we don't experience traffic yet so we will do this one come on let's proceed to the pet shop So the process is we will put them all together here in a big aquarium this is just the glass tank and then after they will regain their stress I mean they will become stronger then that's the time that we're gonna put them separately according to their sizes so this is it we will do this very quickly and take note that the water of this tank is already an aged water it's been a practice to really age the water for 10 days and this is very safe maybe you will ask Dexter why wait for that long time when you can use the anti-chlorine well the anti-chlorine has still its uh, side effect as what I have observed so you will see that they are now able to regain their strength they've been so stressed not so stressed but uh, a bit stressed because we just did it very quickly and the process of segregation will be done uh, two, three days from now. And this business is good if you only know how to breed and know the basics about carrying this uh, Japanese koi. Oh, they are big, they are small. You will see that there is no casualty. Okay, can you put that here, Ryan? just uh, put over here Oops. Okay. well in our country in the Philippines we normally observe power interruption and this is very crucial because uh, if this power interruption will occur during this times meaning the transfer and you know you will you will see that there are plenty of here we will always have the power backup this uh, generator because the environment is already different than the glass tanks that they used to uh, occupy because one mistake will make the whole process a failure we cannot anymore sell because our Japanese koi had been so stressed and it died and this is the the downside of you know dealing with the livestock but if we just know how to handle them know the basics of handling this Japanese koi and every livestock for that matter then we can be assured that we will really gain. It is very important that we will have the backup power, we have the generator, because along the process, if there is power interruption, which we normally observe here in our country, the Philippines, especially in our city of Zamboanga, then all this fish will just uh, vanish. They will die if we don't have backup power. So that's why we have the standby generator. I have two generators for the pet shops to ensure that our fish will not die during power interruptions. And if you are just here in our city, well, you can visit this place. We have this uh, Bantam chicken. We displayed rabbits. We also have some bigger Japanese koi. We 
also have different types of goldfish and we also have this uh, chickens we have the chicks of this Rhode Island Red you can just come and avail of our stacks right here and we are glad to entertain you our staff are trained to uh, give you some answers to your queries about caring and you know uh, how to take care of this uh, tropical fish inside in the aquarium and uh, we also have this rabbits and these rabbits are our own produce so these are the things that we are selling here and please come and visit our place and these are the things that we can share so far i hope you will continue to like and share our videos and if you are not subscribed to this channel may we humbly ask you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are regularly uploading videos on here at Dexter's World!